Citibank's digital journey over the past few years has seen it move into Asia's leading ecosystems where customers now spend most of their time. But what have the results been? We talked to City's Gonzalo Lucetti, head of Consumer Bank Asia, Pacific, Europe, Middle East and Africa, about engaging customers through their digital channels and the trends he sees taking place in the region. City actually has been going big into digital strategy. You, you all know that that's the way it's going to go. And it seems to be paying off, especially in Asia where, and I'm quoting you, where you've said that previously mobile penetration outweighs credit card penetration. So can you update us on the latest developments on what's been happening since? That, that quote, which I, I wouldn't consider that a blinding insight, is um, it, it, to me, is, is one of the bigger signs of how large the opportunity is for banks and bankarization. There is no question that there are more people that have smartphones in this day and age, and this is true, I think, across most markets, yes. versus the portion of the population that is has access to banking services. And so I think that's where the big opportunity lies for a lot of us, which is helping countries and economies broaden their reach mm. uh, and be able to provide you know greater access. And obviously, utilizing digital means as a vehicle to be able to reach more clients. Uh, that's something that uh, we're focused on as well. So it's not only about reducing the friction with which you reach your existing clients, but also providing the ability to scale in a different way at a different speed from maybe what one was accustomed to, right? And if you think back to, if you think back to how banking had been done, um, consumer and retail banking in the last 30 years, the way to grow was to put as many branches as you could in as many yes. places as you could to make yes. it so convenient for you. So when you're close to home, close to work, close to the gym, close to the places that where you would frequent, uh, you could see our branch and, and walk in. That paradigm shifts today, right? You, you need less physical locations and uh, or you don't need as many of them. Uh, but the ability to reach clients where they are in the digital world and, and I call these virtual cities because I, I do think that people are spending several minutes, sometimes hours of the day in some of these digital ecosystems. It's almost like a virtual city that mm. exists. Are we also present in those virtual ecosystems? Do we have the equivalent of branches in the virtual locations? In terms of milestones, the latest milestones that you've reached, what is the m latest digital milestone that you think the banks reached recently? Some, some people ask me about uh, digital banking and so on. 95% of our transactions today across the whole region are already on self-service channel, primarily digital. So you could argue we are a digital bank. Obviously, because of our scale, that 5% may still be like 30 million transactions a year. Correct. However, uh, there's no question that we are at the end of the tail as opposed to the beginning of the tail. So obviously, that extra tail is the much harder to get, but the progress is undeniable. And, and obviously, a large part of it is the clients taking you there because mm -hmm. the clients are becoming more uh, are becoming savvier, are becoming, uh, are, are using the platforms a lot more. Uh, clearly, second piece is enabled by technology and regulation. The shift has come very quickly, and Citibank feels that it actually has moved with that shift at the, mm -hmm. at a comparable speed. I certainly would hope so. Now, I'm very self-critical, so I'll be the last person to tell you we're doing fantastically well because I see a lot of opportunities for us to accelerate further. But as I, my team always reminds me, I think there has been tremendous progress, whether it's you know, on, I don't know, Boys Bio, which we launched a couple of years ago, and we have almost 80% of the clients are subscribed for that. Just think of the billions of minutes, the days and months that we're saving on the clients' lives so that they can do what they prefer to do the most, right? So I'll tell you my personal experience. Um, I don't want to walk into a branch to have to pay a bill. I want to do that on my commute. I'm sitting in the car or in a taxi or I'm sitting on, on the bus and I want to do three clicks and be done with it. If I had to walk to a branch, or if I even had to call and spend 10 minutes being authenticated, serviced, and so on, even if the service was good, I prefer to have those nine minutes back and just do it in one minute. The one thing that you have been, other thing that you've been very successful is all the partnerships. We, sure. of course, know about uh, Grab, sure. which is very, very well talked about. But for me, I found it interesting that in Thailand, you actually paired up with Line. People people who look like competitors or would-be competitors that you're pairing up with. How many more of these partnerships do you think that you will explore in the coming months? Many more. Uh, and, and the reason is, if you look at our strategy, which obviously we're slightly different from local mass market banks, is our strategy is uh, light physical, high digital. Mm. Uh, therefore, uh, and if you look at the branches over the last four or five years, we've reduced our physical footprint uh, materially and at the same time we were growing in all of these markets. 
And, and so if you think about how do we then aspire to grow is we need to synthetically expand the distribution points that we have. So partnerships, the reason it plays a critical strategic role is it helps augment our reach. So that's the, that's the reason why we focus so much, so much in partnerships. But you're right, some of the partnerships will have pockets of competition uh, and, and, and the same partner may have pockets of uh, collaboration. So, uh, so yes, we've, you know, we've recently announced a partnership with Paytm in India or with Grab in the Philippines, uh, and we have others that are in the pipeline for this year. And uh, that already is a lot more than we've done in the last couple of years. And what is the outlook then you have for Malaysia, especially when it comes to digital trends? Our Malaysia business, not, not that dissimilar from the rest of the region, is highly digitized, right? We have about 80% of our digital clients are, have downloaded our, our new app, right? We're seeing the uptick in digitization of our business. So today, for instance, I think almost half of the installment loans that we originate are digitally originated. Uh, and I think our team on the ground are very focused on ensuring that digitization is the vehicle to deliver that growth that we look for the future. So I, you know, I'm very positive on the prospects for our business and our franchise in the market, both mm -hmm. not only in terms of partnerships, but also in terms of our core and being able to deliver that kind of light physical, high digital. Again, if you look at what we've done in Malaysia, consistent with the rest of the region, is we've been very focused on trying to deliver digital capabilities. And, um, and examples of that are, I think Malaysia was the first market where we did voice biometric. This year we launched natural language uh, on, the, on the call centers. At the same time that we're also eliminating friction from uh, the digital experience, we launched the uh, uh, the new card mobile experience. We are launching. We also launched the new retail experience a few weeks ago. Yes. So we're really putting a lot in upgrading our our properties and ensuring that our model goes with that.